Bob Chelnick and the CBC Alberta News tomorrow at 6. From Alberta's news source, CBC Alberta News. Tonight, a Calgary woman is bound and gagged at knife point during a terrorizing robbery. Alberta gun owners take aim at Ottawa. And later in sports, so much for low scores, point crazy day in the NFL. Good evening. Staring down the barrel of a gun, a Calgary woman was tied up, gagged, and robbed today. Two men broke into the woman's office and put her through a morning of terror. Brenda Ziegler has more. Scared and shaken, 47-year-old Kathy Dallas is still recovering from a terrifying morning that she's not ready to talk about. Her daughter says around 11, she was planning on meeting someone interested in renting a townhouse when two men burst into her office. Yeah, they walked in with a gun and pointed it to her head. And then the other one put the knife down to tie her up and put her in the basement. Nicola Dallas says her mother was left bound and gagged, trapped in the basement for almost an hour. But that she managed to escape by kicking open this door. And after knocking a phone off the hook, called her family for help. See, somebody made an appointment to view, but nobody turned up. Only these two guys. So... But she wasn't hurt, so that's amazing. Police say one of the men who was carrying the small caliber handgun was wearing a ski mask. The other had a large kitchen knife, and they believed that the robbers were looking for money. The uh, two culprits then ransacked the office, and uh, at this point we are unsure as to what is missing. The Dallas family say they were shocked that anyone would try to rob them, and they're hoping that the descriptions they provided the police will lead to an early arrest of the two robbers. Brenda Ziegler, CBC News, Calgary. One man is dead and another is in jail after a knife fight on an Indian reserve near Grimshaw. 30-year-old Robert Hammer died on the Duncan's Band Reserve late last night from stab wounds to the chest. RCMP have refused to release the name of the man who killed Hammer, but it's believed the two were friends. More than a thousand gun-loving Albertans turned out in Edmonton today to admire weapons and take a few shots at the federal government. Last week, Justice Minister Alan Rock announced sweeping changes to our country's gun laws. Under the new law, many of the weapons these enthusiasts are admiring would be illegal. The legislation also means that gun collectors will no longer be able to leave their guns to their children as part of an inheritance. And those changes infuriated many of those at this weekend's gun rally. Thing. I've never been a vocal person or, or an activist or anything. I'm a working guy. I don't have a lot of time for this. My, you know, but they've got us very upset, and I think we'll do whatever we can do. Gun buffs from across the country vow to fight Ottawa to stop the new legislation before it's passed by Parliament. At least 10,000 Albertans have sent letters to Alan Rock demanding he put a stop to the new gun control bill. Mounties in northern Alberta have arrested more than 30 people in a drug sweep that netted $14,000 worth of dope. The arrests were made on Friday in the towns of Lac La Biche and St. Paul. It was the climax of a two-month RCMP operation aimed at cracking a long-standing drug ring. Marijuana, cocaine, guns, and about $4,000 in cash were seized in the raid. Among those arrested were two young offenders. With their homes nestled in the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, private landowners are fighting to stop logging on nearby public land. On this crown land just west of Calgary, loggers were to begin cutting trees in a matter of weeks. A deal between the province and a local rancher who leases the land to graze his cattle would allow large sections of aspens, popular to clear cut, destroying all the grazing area. But neighbors like Al Brakey and Tom Olson say this is a valuable wilderness area. They say they're frustrated such an important decision has been made without any public input at all. But there was virtually no discussion with any local people, with any of the neighbors, any of the other land users who uh, use this land for hiking or cross-country skiing, for hunting or any other uses up here. Loggers say only new growth aspen would be clear-cut, not nearby spruce trees. The Alberta government is planning to limit the number of doctors practicing in Alberta. Senior health officials have teamed up with a committee of doctors to decide how new physicians will be allowed, how many new physicians will be allowed into the province next year. They decided that 210 would be a good number. A spokesman for Alberta Health says many doctors, uh, mean to many doctors, bills being paid by the province. If Health Minister Shirley McClellan approves the plan, the ban will be in effect early in the new year. 
A fire at an Edmonton roofing plant Saturday caused more than half a million dollars damage. The fire was in the heart of Edmonton's refinery row. Dozens of extra firefighters were called in to contain the blaze. It took almost the entire day and more than three dozen firefighters to douse the stubborn fire. Frigid temperatures frustrated the efforts of fire crews. Hoses often froze and icy ground made the work treacherous. One firefighter had to be treated for frostbite on his feet and hands, and an employee at the plant suffered smoke inhalation. The fire was started by a heater and spread quickly throughout the 45-year-old wooden building. Premier Ralph Klein said, let the festivities begin tonight. The Christmas season is upon us. And let the lights begin in three, two, Finally tonight, we have the sights and sounds of the world's largest indoor parade. It's Edmonton's annual Santa Claus Pedway Parade. Today, the parade wound through several downtown shopping malls, and the smiles on these children's faces are guaranteed to knock the humbug out of the sourest Christmas Grinch. And it is time for a look at the weather picture around the province. Sort of a mixed bag today. A surface ridge kept temperatures chilly in central regions. Edmonton barely reached the minus teens, uh, but an upper ridge pumped warmer Pacific air into some regions today. Swan Hills, for instance, got up to about minus 7. Areas of southwestern Alberta were milder as well. It will be sunny tomorrow, still cool though in most parts of the province. And we might see some milder temperatures by Tuesday and then cold again by Thursday. Right now in Edmonton, clear skies, minus 18 degrees. Calgary, clear as well, and minus 17 degrees. So let's look region by region. Starting in the northwest, high level, increasing cloud overnight, cloudy tomorrow. And uh, for Grand Prairie, clear overnight, just some high cloud for tomorrow. In the northeast, Fort McMurray and Lac La Biche, clear overnight, both with sunshine tomorrow. In Lloydminster, clear and very cold overnight, and then high wind chills as well. So careful if you're heading outdoors sunshine on the way tomorrow. Central Alberta, Red Deer and Drumheller are both clear overnight, sunny skies on the way tomorrow. And in the mountain parks, Jasper, clear sky overnight, sunshine for tomorrow, much the same for Banff, clear overnight, sunny tomorrow as well. And in the south, in uh, Crow's Nest Pass and Lethbridge, clear overnight, sunny and a bit milder tomorrow than it was today, highs at both areas minus six degrees. Four day outlook looks like this, you'll have the sunshine Monday, and uh, not a lot milder, but to minus 10 for Tuesday for the high. And then flurries, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, cloudy with flurries both days. And there you see it much cooler by the time Thursday rolls around. For Calgary, much the same. You see the temperatures dropping midweek, minus 8 Wednesday, minus 15 on Thursday with uh, some of those flurries as well. That's news and weather for now. We will take a break and come back with, of course, today's sports action. We are going to go south of the border to the NFL. And it was a wild day, considering they say this is a league where they don't score a lot of points, they did today. We'll have highlights when we come back. Holy countdown, BB touchdown! Here's the lowdown on the new Provide Performance Pledge. Provide will make you more money. Dope, moolah, clams. Well, you'll pay nothing. Nada, zippo, zilch, <laughs> goose egg. The Provide Performance Pledge. You'll make more money with Provide or your money back. 
It's the festive season, and once again, Swiss Chalet is bringing you a special tradition. Our festive special for only $6.95. Along with a plump quarter chicken, golden fries or baked potato, and chalet sauce, you'll also receive cranberry sauce, tasty stuffing, and a festive treat, a 100-gram Toblerone Swiss chocolate bar. At $6.95, it's a jolly good deal. And it's our way of wrapping up our thanks to you. The festive special, only $6.95. Timex, it takes a licking and keeps on ticking. Set of a hit CBC drama, North of 60. We'll have interviews with Susan McGlucart, Robbie Robertson, Peter Rowan, and Tom Jackson. Don't miss it. The Country Beat, tonight on CBC. Jamie is taking a well-deserved rest. Let's get to the world of sports tonight. We start with hockey. Yes, the 99 All-Stars continued their European tour. CBC showed you action last night against Jokrit, 7-1 win for Gretzky and friends. Well, today the Gretz stars came out on the northbound end of a southbound score. Let's take a look. A 4-3 loss in overtime. The three all-star goals came from Gretzky, Steve Eisenman, Tony Granato. They played Ildis Temper. Let's be fair, though. This has been a grueling schedule for the stars. Three games in four nights on two continents. Their next game, as you see there, Tuesday against the Spectrum All-Stars. Let's get to some hockey, though. Western Hockey League, we go to Red Deer. Prince Albert and the Rebels, first period, Shane Willis gets Raiders on the board. Blasted past Chris Wickenheiser, 1-0 PA. Raiders led 2-zip after 1. Let's go to the second. Rebels cough it up, and Shane Toporowski goes upstairs on Wickenheiser. Raiders up 3-0. Comfy lead. Finally, the Rebels get on the board. Tony Vlastelic gets on the board there, beats Craig Hordell. 3-1. Raiders still up by 2. Rebels get close, though. Pete Laboutillier takes the shot from the slot, beats Hordell. 3-2 Raiders. The Raiders would make it to 4-2, to two, but the Rebels keep fighting. Lots of traffic in front, and Byron Brisky either tips it or Hordell simply doesn't see it here. Lots of bodies in front. That would make it 4-3, to three, but Russell Hogue's empty netter would give the Raiders a 5-3 to three win over Red Deer. The Raiders sweep their three-game swing through Alberta. Rest of the scores look like this. Kamloops beating Swift Current, 8-zip the final there. A couple of other games, Tri-Cities and Seattle playing to a 5-all tie, and Tacoma winners tonight over the Spokane Chiefs. We go from the Western Hockey League to Alberta Junior Hockey. We have action involving both Calgary squads tonight, the Canucks and the Royals. The Canucks paid a visit to Sherwood Park. The Canucks coming off a 6-3 win over St. Albert last night. Let's see what happened tonight in Sherwood Park. First period, Crusaders on the power play. Andrew Lusiak at the shot, and Kevin Chuak gets his stick on it in front. Sherwood Park's on the board. Later, Crusaders leading two zip. Canucks get one. Dion Wandler breaks it all alone. He goes shelf on Dean Crossland. Crusaders lead 2-1. Second period, Crusaders leading 3-1. Again, it's Dion Wander. Two-on-one with Scott Wagner. Wagner with the nice pass. Wander finishes, and the Canucks are within one. Crusaders regain a two-goal bulge, though. Tim Donnelly feeds Ryan Poli with the breakaway pass here. Poli in all alone. He makes the nice move on Winninger. That makes it 4-2. The final in this one would be 5-2-3 for the Sherwood Park Crusaders. Let's take a look at the Calgary Royals in Fort Saskatchewan. Third period, 3-1 Calgary. Great traders break in. And uh, the goal there makes it 3-2. to two. Final seconds ticking off. Traders with lots of pressure. Six attackers, but they just cannot get a decent shot away. The Calgary Royals would win this one 3-2. to two. The Royals gain some ground on St. Albert, Fort Saskatchewan, and Bonneville in the standings. Let's take a look at the final scores. There you see Sherwood Park over the Calgary Canucks. Fort Saskatchewan losing to the Royals. One other game, Bonneville, 4-3 win over Fort McMurray. Okay, that's a quick hockey story. We'll take a break and come back with today's NFL action, and as we said, league piling up the points today, and they sure did, and the Cowboys going after their third NFC East crown. We'll have the story when we come back. Stay with us.
We'd like to talk to you about European sports sedans. <laughs> As a matter of fact, we do. Like the great European sports sedans, we designed the Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme to have ample performance and room for five adults. It also boasts a potent 160 horsepower sequentially fuel-injected V6, nimble four-wheel independent suspension, anti-lock brakes, and a litany of standard features. Well, hey, it's your Deutschmarks. Quality, quietness, power. Get Beam's most powerful offer. Get the Beam Smart Classic. Super power motor with sound reducer. Deluxe power brush with light. Beam quality easy grip hose. Complete four inlet kit. And the Beam 10-year warranty. A powerful offer that won't outpower your budget. Installation in any home old or new is easy. Satisfaction is guaranteed. So why lug a vacuum? Plug in a Beam today. Available at Jiffy Vacuum Edmonton, the Sewing Center, Cam Rose, or consult the Yellow Pages. Dear Linda, I know you've wondered why a bike shop, why a cross-country race in eight days with absolutely no sleep. The best answer I have is because I can love Steve. At Molson, we understand. Introducing new Molson Doppelbock, the third great beer in our signature series. And if it was easy to make, you would have had one by now. New Molson Doppelbock, because we can. One company believes you can't put a price on safety. So every year, they conduct four times the number of crash tests required by law. Because there's always more to learn. And because when it comes to building safer vehicles, they think government requirements are just the starting point. The company is General Motors. You're with CBC Alberta News. In the NFL, a big battle in the AFC East tonight between the 8-4 and four Miami Dolphins and the 6-6 six and six Buffalo Bills. The Bills had lost two of their last three, and they needed a win tonight to keep their playoff hopes alive. And a win would, as well would move the Bills to within one game of the first-place Dolphins. And keep in mind, the Bills had won their last four games at Joe Robbie Stadium. And this was a great game tonight, 69,000-plus on hand at Joe Robbie. Let's pick this, out, this, this up with the Bills leading 7-0. Dan Marino to Irving Fryer. Three-yard touchdown strike. We're tied at 7. Dolphins would make it 10-7, and then Marino again. And again, it's to Irving Fryer. They connect. Fryer is all alone in behind coverage, 17-7. Dolphins are out in front. Now watch this. This is one of the best catches of the day. Jim Kelly puts it up, bobbled, tipped, and in the hands of Don Beebe. He goes 72 yards for the touchdown. Unbelievable. Great catch. 14, or rather 17-14. Dolphins still lead. They make it 21-17, and then watch this. A fumble reverse here. Andre Reed uh, fumbles there. Watch this now. This is a kickoff return. Yanel Jordan. He's hit. Ball pops out. There we go. Into the hands of Mike Dumas, and he takes off and runs another 40 yards on the kick return. Scores 35-23 Bills at this point, and then we would come back here. Watch this. Jim Kelly gets the ball away to Andre Reed. Somehow in the middle of all that coverage, or in the, in, rather with the uh, pressure, Jim Kelly got that ball to Andre Reed. 83 yards untouched, 42-23 at that point. The final score would be the Bills uh, all over the Miami Dolphins tonight. Uh, and the uh, Dolphins lose, and we're going to get to the rest of the NFL story. That was just the appetizer on tonight's NFL menu. Master Chef Dennis Glasgow's here with the main course, the NFL Wrap. Week number 14 in the NFL starts at Foxborough. Pats hosting the Jets. We start on the second quarter when Boomer Esiason will find Art Monk on the 15-yard TD. Jets up by four. Patriots come right back. Drew Bledsoe will hit Vincent Brisby on this 16-yard touchdown. New England up 10-7. Let's move to the third score, 13-10 New York. Pat Need comes up big. Boomer tosses to the wrong guy, though. Ricky Reynolds takes it in for the INT for the 11-yard major. New England goes up 17-13. To finish off the scoring, this fourth quarter run by Leroy Thompson from two yards out for the score wraps it up for the Patriots, getting by the New York Jets 24-13. To Riverfront, Neil O'Donnell back in the lineup for the Steelers. He watched the Steel Curtain win another game. This 27-yard INT for the score by Rod Woodson gives Pittsburgh their 10th win. They hammer the Bungles 38-15. Let's go to the big sombrero on Tampa. Buck pivot Craig Erickson plunged over the top late in the fourth with a major as Tampa Bay gets by Washington 26-21.
All right, over to Philly. Christmas comes early for Darren Woodson, courtesy of Randall Cunningham. The Eagle quarterback gives the gift that keeps on giving. It's a 94-yard INT for the touchdown. Dallas clinches the NFC East again. They hammer the Eagles 31-19. Philadelphia has lost four in a row. And Anaheim, don't call him Chris Everett, threw for 161 yards, and this TD to Michael Haynes. Jim Everett burns his old teammates, the LA Rams, scoring 21 second quarter points. They went big, 31-15. All right, Buddy Ryan visits the House of Disdain in Houston. His car scored 20 fourth quarter points, including his pass from Jay Schrader to Gary Clark. Arizona continues to win. They punt the oil 30-12. At the stick, Dion and Andre renew their love affair for the second time this season. Atlanta should renew a defense. They gave up a ton of points to San Fran. Steve Young threw for three TDs as the 49ers give it to the Falcons 50-14. We moved to the Kingdome where the fans had other things on their mind on Sunday, but life does go on. Colts rookie running back Marshall Falk ran for 129 yards in this TD as Indy takes it to Seattle, 31-19. The Cheeseheads were getting moldy at the Silver Dome. The Packer fans watched a wild one. Lions Derek Moore scores this fourth quarter TD for the win. The Silver and Blue beat Green Bay 34-31. Detroit is 7-6. Packers are 6-7. At Cleveland, Dan Reeves and his Giants pulled off the upset of the day. Brad DeLuiso kicked this 33-yard field goal with 19 seconds left to give the New York Giants a 16-13 victory over the Browns. Cleveland drops to 9-4. And, and finally, at mile high, Big Sky is out of the lineup for the Chiefs. This big AFC West battle went to overtime, and it's Denver's Jason Elam booting the 34-yard field goal for the win. 2017 is the final. Both teams are 7-5. Hey, it's over. That's the NFL wrap for Week 14. I'm Dennis Glasgow for CBC Sports. And by the way, that final in the Bills-Dolphins game, 42-31. The uh, Buffalo Bills winning, and of course, the Monday night or tomorrow night, L.A. Raiders in San Diego to take on the Chargers. Well, you had to think today's final in curling's skins game would be a doozy. Current world champ Rick Folk of Kelowna, B.C., up against two-time world champ Ed Werenich, better known as The Wrench. Some big bucks on the line today as well. And once again, Dennis Glasgow has the details for you. It's Rick Folk versus Ed Werenich in Sunday's skins game final at Saskatoon. We pick up the match in the third end. A carryover from the second end allows The Wrench to pick up two skins. Watch this, the beautiful draw to the button. He makes no mistake about it. Takes the two skins, and he will lead with $6,500. All right, let's move to the fifth end. Another carryover, and it's Wernick again. This time he steals because Folk can't make the shot. He wrecks it, and he picks up another two skins. His total goes to $12,000. Folk was shot on until the sixth end, but when he makes his money, he makes it with a beautiful shot. Watch this. Double raise. Just a little love tap, and that gives the BC skip a skin worth $3,000. All right, let's move to the ninth now. Wernick with a hammer. This skin worth five grand. He makes no mistake. He would finish today with $28,000. Folk ends up with 6,500. The 94 Skins game champion is Ed Wernick and is now the all-time Skins money winner in curling, surpassing Russ Howard. Dennis Glasgow, CBC Sports. And there you see Ed Wernick pocketing 28,000 bucks today for that victory in the Skins game. Great finish today in the J.C. Penny Classic. This is a mixed tournament, men's and ladies pro golfers battling for big prize money. After two days of best ball and then two days of alternate stroke play, two teams ended up tied and settled things in a playoff. Let's take a look at how this one ended. We will start with number 14, Davis Love the third, paired with Beth Daniel here. Love drops the birdie putt. Good for a share of the lead at 21 under. Brad Bryant and Martha Figueres Dotty. Bryant drops the putt there. 22 under par. Takes the lead. Robert Gomez and Helen Alfredson get into the fight here. Gomez with this long birdie on 15, drains that, moves into a tie at 22 under. On to 17, Martha Figueres Dottie with this birdie putt for sole possession of the lead. And she rings the cup there. Bryant taps in for par. They're still at 22 under. Things got a little tense for Bryant and Figueres Dottie on 18. They had to save par here to stay tied for the lead. And Brad Bryant drops that. And Alfredson with nerves of steel now. She has a par as well to stay tied for the lead and go to playoff. Yes, so we go to extra holes. This wasn't settled until the fourth extra playoff hole. Alfredson with this putt for par and watch. The pressure gets to her. She misses that for par. She can't believe it. So now all Brad Bryant has to do is make his par. And he and Martha Figueres Dotti win the tournament. No mistake at all. Puts the par down. Wins his first ever tournament. That's the first ever win for Brad Bryant as a pro. He takes 150000 as does Martha Figueres Dotti. She takes 150 Gs as well. Canadian gals involved, Don Coe Jones and Brian Henniger, 11 under, Barb Bunkowski, Ken Green, finishing at 9 under par. We do have one NBA score we want to show you, just one game in the National Basketball League tonight. Portland beating Milwaukee 
103. Quick boxing note to pass along to you. Riddick Bowe, the WBO heavyweight champ, as of last night, he beat Larry Donald. Well, after the fight last night, a process server tried to serve Bowe with papers charging him with assault and battery. The charges stem from punches thrown at a pre-fight news conference. By the way, when the deputy tried to serve the papers after the fight last night, another scuffle broke out between the two camps. And only in the world of boxing. Well, many people live dual lives. There's the image they project in the workplace, and then there's the secret, the hidden dream, one that not even their closest co-workers suspect. Ken Daniel caught up with one such person. It's another day at the office for Nikki Balatoni, a 25-year-old from Toronto who has made her family proud, graduating with honors in English and history from the University of Western Ontario. Now Nikki's a computer consultant with Star Data. Between 9 and 5, she's punching keys. Everybody here has been really supportive. They kind of look at me and think, mm, that's kind of weird. A lot of people still don't know that, that, that I do this. Some of my girlfriends think it's a bit weird. There's a lot of women that have asked, what, where did I get involved in this? Um, the, guys, the guys are the ones that look at you with the raised eyebrows and say, no. And you say, yeah. And then they, and they don't really get it call them glam queens you know they're in their designer aerobics outfits and checking their makeup before they go into a step class and fixing their hair and everything has to match you know and I go in there in a t-shirt and shorts and they look at me like you know well you don't match so now Nikki works out at Toronto's Lansdowne gym often five days a week two hours per day all toward the first ever Ontario Women's Provincial Championships to be held in Niagara Falls December 10th and 11th Nikki is one of only 17 women registered to box in Ontario. And with 183 in Canada, the sport's come a long way since its first nationally sanctioned fight three years ago. For women generally, I would really like to see the sport flourish. It, every time there's a, a women's bout on a card, it's, it's considered a novelty, and, and that's a bit, dis and that gets frustrating. Can't be all that frustrating. She has won both of her pro fights so far. And uh, Nikki will be fighting again next weekend for the Ontario Championship. One other story out of Ontario tonight. I want to pass this along to you. You've heard about the Hamilton Tiger Cats, of course. They need some money in the bank and season ticket sales to stay in Hamilton. Well, the Tiger Cats season ticket drive topping out about 9,000 so far. That's their highest total in 10 years. The CFL has ordered the Tiger Cats to sell 12,500 season tickets, and uh, also they have to have about a million bucks in the bank. All of this by December the 23rd. A couple of NFL notes: quarterbacks that were knocked out today. Rough day for the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, quarterback Rick Meyer breaking his thumb and John Elway twisted his left knee. He's okay. Meyer is done. We're done. Thanks for joining us tonight. See you next weekend. Good night. This is CBC, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation.